Hello, people. Hello, hello. Oh, all the organizational skills that I don't have. There we go. Oh, it's just not letting me do what I need to do. There we go. Oops. Hey, Susan. It is uh, stay muted because otherwise you're going to come up on. I'm, it's on a live stream already. Oh. So, yeah, if you, I can always delete it in the future or like I could take it out if it comes in. Well, I could leave if you like. No, 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 no. Stay. Saul is coming in too. And now I can spotlight myself. And once I'm spotlit, you won't come up on the video. All righty. How is everybody? It is Laura. We are in Somatic Mat, and I have a couple of people in the room. Um, and it's live streaming already, so I'm having kitty issues today, and it's all, you know, seems like our lives just start to fall apart all at the same time. Like, I mean, like, when there's one problem, then there's like 600 more problems. It's not like one at a time anyway yeah one kitty the big one is having vomiting and pooping problems and everything so i have to take him to the vet after this and the little ones are annoying the shit out of him <laughs> all right so on that bright note let's come in for a landing in our own bodies and i'm actually just going to start with uh twisting so before we, normally we start with the vertical breathing up and down, but right now, twisting, shifting your weight, looking around behind you. <sighs> ah, breathing, letting your diaphragm move, right? So as we're twisting, we're moving all of these organs in here. Diaphragm, spleen, liver, stomach. And we're also going to imagine that we don't have to pull them up that those organs can kind of descend. So it's one of the things that sometimes with these different, uh, like ballet, Pilates, things where we're like supposed to pull up and in, that can kind of um, squeeze our organs up into places they don't need to be. So we wanna have equal access to pushing down and out. So with the spiraling, letting your, your stomach, actually you can even take your hands on, on your lower ribs and just sort of push down. Letting it sort of descend down so that we're not just, <gasps> but we're, ha, oh, we're coming down into the earth, right? Coming down to the ground, letting our organs be in there. It's interesting because the way that our organs are in our body, it's kind of like they're vacuum packed in there. They're really supported. We don't have to hold them up, right? I don't need to hold it all in and up. I can just let it hang. Back to the twisting for a second. <sighs> Releasing, excuse me. Releasing through the diaphragm, relaxing your belly so that as you breathe, your, your diaphragm can push your organs down, not holding a whole bunch of tension in our guts. How do we release tension from our guts? So much of it is like these patterns, these cultural holding patterns of got to squeeze it all in or wear my tight little jeans or even these leggings like I never wear anything like this for very long because I feel like it's just restricting me too much. All right, let's come into our vertical breathing. Inhale, open it up, and exhale. So I am in the vertical plane in my body. I'm inhaling open and exhaling, softening. Inhale, open, chest, lungs, and heart, and exhale. I was thinking about you last night, Susan. I was in the... Um, we had the somatic exploration class and I thought, hmm, maybe Susan's gonna pop up. So I am not surprised to see you this morning. Exhale, inhale, open, fill up, exhale, let go, release. And let's just shake and bounce for a second. Uh, relax your neck and tongue, relax your throat, relax your jaw, free flow in your body, jiggling, letting everything go. And then let's just do the dimensional cross of axis. So we're gonna reach up and down. We're gonna cross over and open. And we're gonna take it backwards 
and forwards. So we're sort of centering our own self within these six points, other side, up and down, crossing it over, opening it up, taking it backwards and forwards, alternating sides, vertical, vertical dimension, up and down, horizontal, side across and side open, sagittal, backwards, and forwards. We want to try and keep our hip bones facing front. Vertical up and down, which is no problem in the vertical. As we turn, as we cross, we still want to keep those hips facing front and open. And then as we go back, we still want to keep those hips facing front. So we don't want to turn. We want to have a spiral in our body and then take it forward. One more time each side. Ah, so in my embodiment PSA, which I do every morning, I did this 10 day challenge for people to learn this dimensional cross of axis. And axes is the plural of axis. Last one, cross it over, open it out, backwards and forwards. And I really feel like that is the, the up and down, is the I am, the side side is the we are, the backwards and the forwards is the I will, or I won't, it's like the will, your own will, your true will, follow it, by saying yes and doing something or by saying no and not doing something. Really letting yourself listen into that. Let's take it down to the floor. And we're gonna spiral again. So working with another twist and massaging out our butt. So I'm gonna lean back and just roll across one glute and then the other. Ha! Ah, I taught a bar burn class at the why yesterday and it's really it's not a very burny class but we do do a whole bunch of tondus we do do a whole bunch of plies it really should be called tondu and twerk not bar burn but okay spiral and circle the whole way down and surrender into the ground and then push the floor away and take it the other way take it down let go letting your arms travel up if that feels good and then give into the ground let yourself down Last one. And then come in and let's take our legs out in front. Actually, let's lay down on the floor. Normally I start with all these seated things, but let's take it down. Ah, just take a couple of breaths and feel the weight of your bones dropping down to the ground. So dense, strong, fluid filled bones, like even our bones are hydrated. And we have bone marrow inside of that. And that helps actually our immune system in, in our bone marrow. The, the B cells, the B lymphocytes are produced. All right, let's do knee drops here. Letting the knees fall one way and then opening and closing the other way. Massaging through your butt, massaging through your lower back. Easing in the abdominals, easing in the organs. So as we're moving, we're getting this internal movement of the organs in a very gentle way, right? We're not squishing and pushing or anything with that. We're just rolling across, easy, opening all the way and then closing. <sighs> Optimal health for the organs is the invitation here. So we're not contracting and holding them or gripping, we're just letting them be. All right, let's come in and let's do just the lower back, just a tiny little tuck and then a tiny little arch. So. It's not really just your lower back, it's your whole spine. But we're not going all the way up right now. What we're trying to do is just get some movement there in our spine, all the way down to our tailbone. And it's I'm not pushing into the floor with my feet, I'm actually just curling up. And I'm also not contracting every muscle. Although that kind of felt good that time. So maybe you can also try it with contracting every muscle. Like we don't want to not contract the muscles ever, but we also just don't want to always be in this contraction. So play back and forth with how easy can you make it? How little, how little tension can you do that with? And then how much tension can you do it with? Right? Oh, I can do it with so much tension. Ha <laughs> And then let that go. 
sometimes when we really engage with the tension, we can actually release stuff that we didn't know we were holding on to. Up and down, playing with how easy can it be and then how much can I work it? And then let's go all the way up. So as we come up now, we're going to be working the back of the body, but not because we're working harder than we have to. We're just pushing up. And that is naturally going to work the back of the body. And let's just shift our pelvis from one side to the other up there. So pelvis is high and we're doing a little shift. As you're doing that, feel what your head wants to do. Let it move a little bit also. So my head wants to go away from my pelvis and turn a little bit to adjust to that movement. I can feel my hamstrings, I can feel my glutes, but I am not squeezing them extra. I'm just letting them do what they have to do. And then this is also massaging through my upper traps and finding some freedom in that whole line of my spine from side to side with a little twist as well. And then bring it all the way down and shake everything out. Shake, 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 loose and easy, free up your spine. Shake out your arms. And just feel where your awareness is in your body. Since we did all of that stuff, I actually can really feel my upper back and neck. And I can also really feel all of this organ area and my lower back. And so now I want to get just wake up my extremities. So I'm going to take my arms and legs up and I'm going to circle my wrists and feet. Your knees can be bent. It doesn't matter. But I, we did all this sort of core central work. Now I want to get to the edges of my body, the distal parts, just waking them up, fingers, toes, palms of the hands, soles of the feet, moving them around. And you can move them together so that each side is doing the same thing, or you can kind of let them free flow in different ways so that they're doing different things. And just feeling into what are those coordinations to free flow so that even my hand and my foot is doing something different. Every, like all four things are doing something different. Or all four things are doing something the same. Just playing with those coordinations. This is all doing different stuff in your brain. <sighs> Shake it out. Lower your feet to the ground. We're going to take our hands behind our head and come up. And just one knee coming up and then the other. Kind of old school Pilates-ish type thing. Very specific. Dipping your toe into the ground and then lifting up. You can try curling up a little bit more and then curl down a little bit more. Curling up a little bit more and curl it down a little bit more. Curl it up a little bit more. and curl it down. So now like we are using those muscles as we curl up. Last one, up. And then, yeah, releasing slowly as we come down. Ah, and relax into that. And we're gonna do the same, not the same thing, a similar thing, but a totally different. It's just gonna be similar in the thigh lift. So we're gonna come up here. So our pelvis is directly between our knees and shoulders, hands down by our sides. You can push the floor away with your arms if you want, and you're just gonna lift one leg at a time and then come down. So you're marching along. Your knee is gonna stay bent as it comes up, feeling the back of your body working. If you feel like being really exciting about this, you could make this a contralateral pattern, bringing the opposite arm up as the leg goes up. Four more, three, two, last one. And relax, take the whole thing down. Wiggle in your belly, soften your spine, roll a little bit side to side, really free flow this. So let your body just soften up again, feeling what was engaged. So I can feel like my glutes were working, my stomach's been working. Like I just wanna soften that up so that I'm not restricting my digestion, or even like my immune system, like our spleen is also working with the lymphatics. So, and our liver is working to detox things. So we don't want to squish them and put more attention in there. We want to give them free reign, free flow. 
take it a little deeper by spiraling and uh, reaching your leg across. Really working with mobility and freedom here. So we're not trying to, I don't know. I, just, I feel like just so many of the ideas of, that we have like about fitness are, are really bass backwards about what is actually healthy for our bodies. So yeah, we don't wanna pack more tension in building strength. We build and then we release and we get soft and easy. We build, we release, we get soft and easy. We really wanna keep throwing in this releasing stuff in the middle, not just pack it on and then work some more. Cause if we don't get that release, we are actually not gonna get stronger. We might get somewhat stronger, but we're gonna get more stronger if we can really go to a neutral. All right. Let's uh, let's do the full leg circles with our hands on the floor. So legs up, open it out. As big or small as you want. I really love these because I feel like this is giving me the chance to both stretch out and also strengthen. So like, I'm, yeah, I'm working my core, I'm working in my center. I'm working my legs a little bit, but I'm really stretching them more than I'm working them. Depending on how strong or weak you are, it might be a lot of work for you to get your legs up. And that also depends on how flexible you are. You may be working so hard just to lengthen those legs out. Last three. One, two, three. And let's stay open and just roll from side to side. Let that massage out your back. Releasing through your sacrum, very easy in the legs. You could stretch them out and point your toes, or you can bend one, bend the other. Ha. And then we're going to, I feel like I haven't done this in forever. Open your feet wider than your sticky mat, internally rotate one leg at a time. You can just keep moving through it, or you can hang out in one stretch. Listen to what your body needs. Breathe. You can hook your heel over and take it deeper or not. Ah, melting into that. So another thing with hydration, like movement hydrates tissue by like redistributing the water and the fluids in your body a little bit. But if you're kind of dehydrated and you're doing that movement, it's like you're trying to move a dry sponge. So we wanna make sure that we stay hydrated by drinking enough fluids Try to drink water before you drink coffee or tea in the morning. Try to hydrate before you do anything that's going to dehydrate you. All right, let's take a happy baby pose. Wiggle around in the baby. Happiness in your baby. Hmm. Breathing into it. Oh, it's the 1st of May. And spring has sprung in the Hudson Valley. It's actually kind of uh, chilly and oh, so there's a cat doing something bad. I'll be right back. I can hear it. Too late. It, whatever they were doing has been done. <laughs> it's, it's over. Little sneakies. All right, let's take the arms out side side. Yeah, spring has sprung and it was kind of like damp and it rained overnight and it's supposed to keep raining on and off today. But like it smells so delicious outside. It really reminds me of England. If you want to straighten your legs out and specifically the southwest of England. where I spent a lot of time because my gran lived there in Devon. Yeah, so sometimes like, go ahead and roll back and forth, rounding your spine. Sometimes for me, I think, oh, it looks crappy outside. I don't really wanna go. And then I go outside and I'm like, wow, it smells amazing out here. It's actually much nicer than I thought it would be. And then I'm really happy I went outside. Oops, there he is, the troublemaker number one. The instigator. I have to poke him. <laughs> See? 
All right, let's flip over. And the other one. Let's come onto hands and knees and let's do the circle with our chest. So down towards the floor and then up. Circling, ribcage, lungs, and heart. And change direction. Yeah, so yesterday, or yesterday, no, Saturday. On Saturday night, him and the big guy, Gaylord, were having such a good time chasing each other all over the house. So whatever's going on with Gaylord now, it, I don't know, hopefully it can't be that bad because he was great two days ago. All right, let's go with opposite arm to leg. Let's go up, take it to the diagonal, bring it in, and then elbow to knee. Up, diagonal, in, elbow to knee. Adding a cat cow to that with the curl or not. We're just staying on one diagonal. Up, out, in, bring it in. Up, out, in, together. Up, out, in, together. Up, out, in. Up, out, in. Last one, up, out, in, bring it down. Finally, warm enough to take off my jacket. And we will switch it to the second side. So <laughs> I also tell something really funny about this guy. Georgina just met him recently. And she's like, you know, he looks like that actor. And I'm like, who? She goes, you know, the one who, <laughs> who was in Sons of Anarchy, Ron Perlman. Like Ron Perlman is like not the most attractive of people. Whereas this guy, but he does have this kind of crazy look in his eyes. So maybe she's right. My friend Leslie has a cat named Antonio Banderas. I'm like, okay, Leslie has Antonio Banderas and I have Ron Perlman. <laughs> All right, up, diagonal. We are on the other diagonal and in. Up, take it out, bring it in, lower. Up, out, in, lower. Up, out, in, together. Up, out, in. Yep, getting attacked. Up, out, in. Up, out, in. Up, out, in. Up, out, in. And last one. Up, out, in. And relax. Let's take it into a child's pose. And just soften. Big, deep breathing into your body. Breathing into your lower back. Letting your head weight drop into the floor. And if your neck is tight and you can't drop your head down, put your head on your hands or put something underneath you. You could use a block. Just something so that you can really release your head and let it drop down. And then from there, you can just turn it a little bit from side to side. Thinking of softening your forehead, getting a massage in that fascia and those muscles in your forehead, and also softening your whole neck. <laughs> One thing I'll say for him as he gnaws on and licks my arm is that he's a fairly gentle fighter. He's not... But <laughs> Finger eating, yeah, this is this is great. Let's take it into a forearm plank. One knee to the floor at a time, parallel, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Crossing under one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. <laughs> and then rocking forward and backward. And release down, bend your knees and let your legs fall from side to side. Allow that to massage through your quads. Relax your butt, relax your back. <sighs> Big breathing. So I know that often we're really trained to breathe quietly, like don't huff and puff. But while you're working out, try to really let yourself make noise if you need to. Really breathe as loud as you, as you need. 
Ah, letting in, letting out whatever needs to go out and letting in the new stuff. Oh, see, he's instigating up there. He's attacking the pea pod. <laughs> anyway, hands next to your chest. You're going to baby cobra up. Inhale, lift and exhale down. Inhale up. Could somebody call Ron Perlman's handler? Inhale, lift, and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Although I have to say, of those two actors, Ron Perlman and Antonio Banderas, I like them both, but I think Ron Perlman has made some pretty interesting movies. I think when you have more of an interesting look and you're not like that leading man type, there are some options to be more weird, which I like. Take it back. Wiggle around. And then shift your weight back towards your heels and roll it up. And let's, let's do some, let's do some side plank. Uh, we're going to side plank. We're going to do a couple of different versions of side plank. So starting with our normal one, just pulsing up, going one, two, three, four, really radiate away from center like a starfish. Even though we're not in that starfish shape in our lower body, think of your head and arms pushing away, feet straight down below you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and shift it to the other side. Press it up. One, two, three. Radiate away from center. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Bring it in. <laughs> when we got those cats, he was really chill. We called him Zazen, like meditation, like sitting in Zazen, because he was so chill. And he would come and just sit on your lap. He wasn't. And and now I realize. I think he was actually sick. Like, I think he has some abdominal issues and like, or some digestive issues. And so I think he was actually kind of sick. So he seemed like this really quiet cat. He's a holy terror. There's nothing like chill about that cat. All right, we're gonna have our hand down. I think I'm gonna have to take off my socks for this. And if you need to adjust this, you can also adjust it. You could make it smaller and just go up here. So this is the easier version. Harder version, your hand's going to be out. You're going to inhale, press up on the diagonal, exhale down. Inhale, push, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Press and lower. Press and lower. Up and down. And last one, up and down and switch it around to the other side. So again, easier version, you would have, you'd just be pressing up and down here. Harder version, you're going up onto your wrist. Um, I'm doing it actually this time with my leg behind. So inhale up, exhale down. One, I didn't count before. I think we probably did about 10 or to 12. Three, four, all the way straight. Five, so you're launching yourself on this diagonal. Six, seven eight, nine, 10, 11, and last one, 12. Take it down. Let's go cross leg. Oh, let's go cross leg it from here. Side side. Stretch it over and open. Side stretch. Open it up. Breathing. Open, open, and let's circle the whole way around, taking it to the side, forward, around, open, to the side, forward, around, open. Take your hands behind you. You're going to come up onto your knees. Press up. Bring it down. One more time. Press up. Oh, bring it down. Undo. Shake it out. Let everything go, and then put your non-dominant leg in front. So whichever one feels awkward, that's the one. It's probably, if you're right-handed, it's probably your left leg. Side-side to start. 
Letting all of that tissue and the side body really open up, becoming more fluid and easy. And then circling the whole way around, taking it sideways, forward and around and lift, sideways, forward, around and lift. Just make it three, we'll just go one more time. And then taking your hands behind you, and again, taking it up and opening, if possible. May not work, it may be that you don't go very high, but if you can get to your knees and push through, go for it. One more time. And release, and come down. And let's just do a forward fold. Walking through your butt. Letting your legs soften up. So as we're kind of moving all that tissue, all that fascia gets a chance to open up a little bit more. Breathing, surrender, let go, ha, ah, and then come up. And let's do this. We're gonna come onto, oh, I know what I wanted to do. It's this, we did this the other day. So I, I, I was in the city on Saturday, so I couldn't do the, um, the live. And I had videotaped it, videotaped it. I had recorded it on my computer, on my phone bo photo booth. And then it never showed up. Like it was there, I saw the whole thing, I stopped it and it disappeared. That it wasn't in my, in my um, trash or anywhere. So that just got lost, which is too bad. So we're gonna do this exercise again. You're just gonna come onto your hands and you're, you can take your weight back if that helps, but if you can keep your weight really over your hands, you're gonna slowly push up and then slowly come back down. It's like you were doing a releve with your feet, pressing up and bringing it down. Take your time, press it up, bring it down, press it up. Yeah, I think I saw this on Daily Movement Snacks on Instagram. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. I do that with my feet. I should do that with my hands too. Up and down. Let's bend the elbows and then push all the way up. This is my own addition. Because if we were doing this with our legs, we would do it from plie as well. So we come down, we bend, and then we push and straighten. And actually this feels better in my wrist than doing it without that. Good, and relax for a second. And let's do the figure eights with our hands. Letting that move into your rib cage, lungs, and heart. So you can get your back going or not. Feeling the connection of these arms into your rib cage, lungs, heart. Ha, ah, wings of the heart. I always say that, wings of the lungs. We got these big wings, they're connected in. All right, and we're gonna do that same exercise this way. So you're going to, let's do it with the, this is gonna be more weird, bent. Bend, can we bend? You can, and push. Little bend, you probably wanna bend straight and push. And on this one, I am taking my weight a little bit more back. I have less weight in my arms to do this. Bending, straightening, pushing. Bending, straightening, and I can feel how much more mobility I have in my left wrist than in my right one. Push, I can also see a size difference between the muscles in my two sides. So my right one is much more uh, developed. Good, and relax that. Take your hands, interlace your fingers. So your fingers are gonna squeeze together. If they weren't squeezing together, your hands would fly open. So fingers are gonna squeeze together. Widen your collarbones. Look from side to side. Ha, ah, relax your neck, jaw, and tongue. Ugh, relax your throat. Pulling side, side. And then let's take your arms up over your head. You're still pulling side, side. Again, looking from side to side. Elbows are pulling out to the side. So I'm not pushing all the way up, I'm bent there. So my elbows can pull. And then I'm gonna circle and I'm gonna let my rib cage, lungs and heart circle around. My diaphragm is mobilizing. I'm not trying to pull up my organs into this, but I'm also not trying to not. I'm just trying to be relaxed in the organs, but letting things move, change direction. Scapula are moving around. So we're, we're engaging the kinky scapula, collarbone, humerus connection. And then just shake it out. 
And for fun, we're going to go so the non-dominant hand fingers just change it so that it feels awkward. So that instead of crossing, normally I'd have my right over my left, I'm going to have my left over my right. And the same thing, arms over your head and circle again. Rib cage, lungs, and heart, rotator cuff, mobilizing. Let your head do whatever feels good. So to me, it feels good to look one way and then the other. Changing direction with the arms. Letting your armpits move, letting all those lymph nodes in your armpit, deltoid, pec region, letting them all move around. So we're doing all our lymph flush just through moving our body. Shake it out. And let's come onto our backs again. Let me just see the time. All right, we're good. We're going to come onto our backs and we're going to do some leg stuff. So let's start with one leg reaching out. From here, you're actually going to lengthen it. So if I'm just neutral, I'm here. If I reach and lengthen, my back is going to arch a little bit more. And then I'm going to kick up, and then I'm going to lower down and point my toes. I'm going to reach and lengthen. So I'm lengthening my leg out, my, my lower back arches, and then I'm going to kick and come down. Flex and lengthen, kick, come down, point, lengthen, kick. It's like we're giving it more space. Flex, reach it out, kick, down, point, reach it out. This exercise, or some version of it, I got from Trisha Kay. She's a ballet dancer from, you know, from the Oakland Ballet years ago, but she started that company, Katie Dance and Katie Dance. And I used to take her class in the 90s in the city. She was one of my first ballet teachers in the city. I had taken ballet from Maria Mills in uh, Michigan and a bunch of other people. But she was one. Of, but uh, Trisha Kay was one of the first ballet teachers that I took with. And I even worked at her factory making Katie Dids. And that's when I learned that I couldn't have an office job. Because I was like, yeah, I was like, mm, can't do that. All right, so let's flex and reach up and point. Lengthen it out. Kick, lower, flex, lengthen. Yeah, but she had this great little floor bar. She's like, you know what? If you can't take class, but you're like there in your hotel room, here are the exercises you need to do. And this was one of them. And that lengthening out, I've never seen anyone else teach it. And I have to say, it feels really good in my body. So flex, lengthen, kick, lower. Point, lengthen, kick, lower. Flex, lengthen, kick, lower. Point, lengthen, kick, and release down. Take both legs out, shake them out. We're going to change it back to your first leg. This time, you're going to go from parallel to turned out. So your leg is still straight down below you. Hips are square to the ceiling. You're going to think of your inner thigh bringing it up and outer thigh bringing it down. So it's not going to go so high. We're not doing that pelvic adjustment going one, two, flexing through your heel, three, four. I can really feel the stretch in my peroneals, the outer calf muscles when I kick up. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch it to the other leg. Flex parallel, turn it out, kicking up, heel coming at the center, one. I'm exhaling up, inhale down, two, three, four, keep rotating out, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just shake out both legs, shake, 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 and we're going to go behind your knee, grabbing on, we're going to stretch it out. Doesn't have to be we're, this isn't to go for your biggest stretch. We're just going to reach through your foot. Point, fold it in. Up. So we're actually really working the quad and the foot. Up, flex. So that's tibialis anterior. Up. Flex ballet teachers, uh, ballet dancers always have like these huge overdeveloped tibialis anteriors from all the flex and point that we do. But that idea of overdeveloped or underdeveloped is an aesthetic choice of different people. Four more. Starting to feel my quad. Try to straighten your knee all the way, even if you have to lower it down. Now, if you want to go for a bigger stretch in that, for my more flexible people, go for it. And last one. And bring it in. Shake it out. Same thing on the other side. 
starting fold it in reach it out flex point fold straighten flex point fold extend flex point fold reach flex point fold reach flex point fold extend flex point fold extend flex point fold extend flex point three more let yourself stretch it more if you want to two last one and shake it out let it go let's roll over onto our sides and take this into a quad stretch so i'm going to grab my ankle and take it back once i get there i can internally and externally rotate a little bit you can probably see how much the whole leg the whole thigh is turning in and out so that's getting that uh, fascia that's under my IT band between my IT band and my quad to have some movement also the movement of all the muscles and all the fascia in the leg gets this nice movement like this right we're getting that as we're on a little bit of a stretch you can kick it back and take it further and then release roll it over onto your other side we're just stretching taking it into the stretch and then internal and external rotation yeah i can also really feel that on the bottom of my quad where it's starting to insert in around my knee and probably my it band as i turn in and out so I'm not like the knee is just a hinge. This internal and external rotation is coming from my hip. It's not coming from my leg going like that with my hip being stable. It's, it's not just a hinge, but all it does is this bend and stretch. We don't want to have like this circling mobility. And when we're circling our knees, we're actually really the, the movement is actually coming from our hips and ankles. And that's one reason why for your knees, you wanna have be walking around in fairly mobile shoes so that you're, the, the, if your foot's really rigid and restricted, it's also gonna mean that your knee has to do more of the work to adjust. So we want to be walking in shoes that allow the foot to be taking the movement. And then release and come onto your back. And let's go with one leg at a time. Since so we've done all that work already, let's keep it up going one, two. You can have your head up or down or both. Like you can shift back and forth. I like to do a few down and then a few up. But I feel like staying up, We most people don't need to be more enclosed in the front of their body, right? Some people could probably benefit from that, but those people are probably not going to take a mat class. Good, and relax and take another happy baby. Wiggle around. Okay, all sorts of popping and clicking. Just stretching into it. Roll, let your body do what it wants to do. And then come back in. And let's flip over onto elbows and knees. One leg out behind, kicking up and down. Going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Switch it to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and bring it in and take it into relax. You can walk your hands out and then pull them back in, or just stay there and relax, whatever you need. If you want to work with that retraction of the arms while you're hanging out down there, you can, but maybe you just need to breathe and relax.
Good. And then rolling it up. And let's let's come onto our butts. And let's do this stretch. I haven't done this in a long time. You're just going to take your ankle over your knee, and then you're going to draw your leg in towards you. So once I get here, I can kind of pick myself up a little bit off the floor, moving towards my leg. I can think about kind of squaring my hips. So if I really let my body twist so that my hips are doing whatever they want, I might not be getting the same stretch as if I try to keep fairly square in the hips and move toward my leg. Breathing into that. It's probably a piece of cake for you, Saul. <laughs> so another thing you could do is grab on and then move like this. Then you're getting to twist. Draw it in towards you. You can also lay on your back and do this. Switch it to the other side. Crossing it over. Just hanging out here for a couple of breaths. And if I move my foot around, I can get all sorts of stuff that's my left ankle and calf are a little bundied, to use a Georgina word. They're a little wonky. And then I'm going to cradle it and move a little bit. This is one reason why we want to cross train and take different classes. Like different things are going to work, different parts of your body. Our bodies want diversity. We want diversity in our nutrition. We want diversity in our movement. We want diversity in our environments if we're going to stay more alive, right? As soon as things are the same for a long time, we get really crusty and sort of in, in channels where things are a little stagnant. All right, last thing here. Open it out. Take it over to your side. Just breathe into it. Try not to let your butt pop off the floor. So try to keep your butt down, melting, opening up the side body, breathing into it. And then inhale, come up and take it over to this other side. So I can actively kind of reach out through this leg. And that'll help me keep my butt on the floor. If my butt pops off, then I'm not actually getting a stretch in here anymore. Once I get my heel back down, then I'm getting into that QL. Inhale up. Turn and face your leg. Take it down. And then take it over to the other side. Same thing. Picture the muscle fibers opening up, fascia elongating, everything happy, fluid, loose, relaxed. And then come up, and we'll take it down the center one time. You can bring your legs in more. If you feel like, oh, my God, this is enough, bring your legs in, take it down, or even Baddha Konasana to go forward. And if you're feeling good, go ahead and take it forward in your straddle. Breathe into it. Oh my God, the cats are charging around the house. It looks like I hear this blah, 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 thundering in one room and then another and then another. They're louder than people. They're much louder than people. And come up, bring it in and bang it out, let it go. Rotate in and out. Kind of grab the fascia and the IT band and just rotate in. You can go from the top by your hip, down your leg. All of this is like anti-hip replacement work, right? We are hydrating that tissue. We're giving it really three-dimensional movement. And we're giving the bones the information that they need to stay strong, right? We use them and we move and they go, okay, I, I can, like we're giving them these really three-dimensional pulls so that they shore up to that, right? It's one reason why it's so important to move. You can hit it out, down your quads if you want, and then down outside of your calves. Maybe the front, just beside the line of your shin and the back, 
and then slide your feet underneath and take your butt up to the ceiling. Let your head hang down, shift from side to side. My feet are pretty wide. I'm letting my body hang, letting the top of my head drop to the floor. So when I'm teaching classes at the gym, I can say, relax your head, relax your head, relax your neck, and people think they are, but their head is still lifted. Bend your knees more if you need to, but try to drop the top of your head to the floor. Try to let go of all that control in the back of the neck and shoulders. Ah, breathe, soften, melt. And then come in and slowly roll it up through your spine, coming all the way up to the top. And inhale, open it up. And exhale, just give yourself a shake and a bounce, letting everything go. And again, inhale, open. And exhale, let it go. And inhale, open it up. And exhale, let it go. All right, people in TV land, like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel. I can't, there's a lot of things I can do once I hit 1,000 people and 4,000 hours of viewing. So I need help. Do it. Help.